Well, I come up with this brilliant idea for a shop series. That was a terrible idea, because guess what? Crap started going wrong. Y'all notice anything wrong with this picture? Outside barn went down on our, on our 4650 here. You'll be able to tell more uh, later, but we just did not need that right now. We spent the past week polishing on a truck. This thing could have went down. It could have went down then. We could have been working on this instead of polishing on a truck, but we just really didn't need this negativity in our life right now, but we got it, so ain't nothing to do but to get it done. We're going to get the forklift, smash the outside jewel off. Then see about getting the inside tire off and see what happens. So the way that these wheels or hubs are in, designed to be in here, these are basically wedges. And you just put them bolts in there and tighten them up and wedge them down. Now to get them out, there's this adjustment screw here. And you turn it and it's supposed to thread in causing them wedges to push out the back end and that in turn will loosen all this up and it will slide off they'll push them wedges out the back end here well, we got her moving now boys got to walk his tire off in this axle Can you see the carnage now? <laughs> this is how you adjust the tread width on these tractors. Let me tell you a little secret me and Robert learned the hard way. And our buddy Bubba Pitts taught us <laughs> this. If you think I know a lot about these old tractors, you just need to meet Bubba. He knows more about them than I do. But, all right. There's two wedges. Go to the back side and show them the wedges, Robert. There's two wedges here that holds this thing in here. And you leave this top wedge in. 
And inside this top wedge, it's like this right here, it's got a slot. And there's a gear in there that engages that axle. And that gear's right in there. And that gear turns and walks this wheel down this axle. Well, you've got to, this wedge here, you've got to take these three bolts out. And these are your jack bolts that push the wedge out. And in theory, that sounds really easy. But years of running and dirt and grime get in there and uh, get just about weld them wedges to the axle. So what well, we've been doing, we've had the luxury, we got three tractors, so we've been able to keep running, so we ain't really worried about this. But, Every time we walk by this thing, we have sprayed all this down with penetrating hole. The backside, front side, just every time we walk by, pick up a can and spray it. <coughs> and then, uh, some people don't do it. I've done it because I think it, I think it helps, but put some heat in here on these wedges. And crank down on the jack boat and then eat your Wheaties this morning and pop the hell out of the end of this axle. Pop the axle, screw down on your jack boats, but don't get overly crazy with them jack boats because you don't want to bust your wedge. But heat, tighten, beat, repeat, heat, tight, beat, and repeat. That's what we've been doing. And, uh, our hard work is finally paying off here, I guess, because we're fixing to roll this sucker off, maybe. But don't knock your bottom wedge completely. Yeah, that's why, this whole point of this was to tell y'all to run these bolts out here, <clears throat> but when your bolt, when your wedge starts moving freely coming out, to start these bolts in, you know, get you about two or three threads hung in that bottom wedge so it don't come completely out and Bubba told us this but I forgot is it'll let when you knock that bottom wedge out it'll let this wheel teeter and then your gear in here won't engage your axle and it'll just free wheel in there instead of walking it down the axle now you say a lot of times you can't get these to move and I don't know if it's cause we uh, I don't know if it's cause we soaked it down and put some heat on it that it moved or we just got lucky. But he said if you don't, if it don't work, you can knock this bottom wedge completely out and rotate your tire 180 degrees where the gears will fall out of the axle. You can slide your forklift up underneath it and take a ratchet strap like we got and hook on the mast and pull it off the end of the axle. But we got lucky and it's gonna walk down the axle. We boogered up the end of this axle a little. I think we're gonna take a grinder and uh, fix where we boogered up so it'll walk on off the end. There's a big snap ring out here on the end you gotta pull off, we got it off. And uh, we're gonna walk this baby off the end. This dang tire right here is freaking heavy, dude. Got cast center, uh, got weights on the back of it and full of fluid. This sucker right here is set up to pull. It is a pulling son of a gun. Maybe while we're replacing the axle. <laughs>
boat broke. Probably don't want to look in there. Shit, all my mad dude to get a new burn and uh, uh I mean, no, no, we just had to get it to you. You. I just have to see. You're right in there, Earl. Your cab mounts on your rear axle housing. Like this right here, and there's this washer in there. So we pulled the two bolts. Pulled the two bolts for right there. And then we jacked our cab up a little. You see what we're using there. And we slid our bracket out. And now, we're able to get in here with the impact wrench and pull this row of bolts right here. So next step, we're gonna go on and remove several of these. And then the next step will be to move the forklift up underneath here. And we got to strap this housing, secure this housing to them forks really good. We'll probably use two pretty good size ratchet straps where this don't tip backwards because there's gears and stuff all right in here. And uh, without the axle hanging out there on the end to counterbalance it, it's going to be backwards heavy. So I'm going to go through there and pull several of them bolts and then we'll get it secured up. I had them in there pretty good. I'm gonna put that one back in there. I'm gonna leave these four, two here and two there that's easy to get to. And we'll get all these hard ones. And that way when we get this thing up here, all we gotta do is just go up here and snatch these loose. And I'm gonna go on and I am going to go on and loosen them now. Ah. Or I get my old pocket knife out and dig the dirt out. Which 
just get in there real I'm gonna have to have some brake pads. Just so we know how it all goes. that in there and I'm gonna pull the shaft out. See where a boat got in there and watered around. Found a boat. Right there's the boat. Got to put <clears throat> new brake pads on it. It stripped the brake pads off of it. So you are. And then, while we're in here, there's an O-ring and a backing in there that we're going to put in there for the brakes. And then, should be ready to go to the field, maybe. Get these uh, house and facings cleaned up good and make sure there ain't any little metal particles in here. Gonna get the brake cleaner and spray this down and wipe it out good. Uh, got new o rings and packings to go in the brake pistons. Got new brake pads and we will put them on just as soon as I get this cleaned up and when we get that done we'll be re should be ready to mount the axle up i hate putting them little packings in They're easy to screw up I'll show you my old ones. That's the old ones. Came all to pieces. Yep. Alrighty. And then stick your rings in. a lot better than our old ones, don't they? <clears throat> Got one pad pressed on and There's a little hole down in there, but I can't grab it. There, I think I got my finger on it. Mm. 
One down, two to go. I'm gonna show you how we pressed. <clears throat> we pressed these on is what we done. Four dogs. I started out trying to use a hammer and I don't think that was ever going to work. Using a block of wood up underneath here in that paper towel so it ain't pressing them pads against metal. You can tell it when it hits the bottom, it gets pretty hard. <clears throat> and that's too damn. Might be wrong, but I took the die grinder and I just lightly, with the polishing pad, and I just lightly ran it over that. Uh, hell, I guess it's like your rotor on your brakes. Like, be like turning your rotor, but I just lightly ran that die grinder over it. There was a couple little grooves, and I just lightly ran it over. May be wrong, we'll find out. Well, that's what we came up with to get it in there. We tied this come along to the tractor, to the forklift where we can ease it in here. This old forklift is kind of all or nothing. But at the moment, we're ready to uh, unstrap it and uh, back the forklift out. We tried hanging it from the straps where we could swing it around, but that did not work good at all. It was a pain, so. What you see is what you get. It's gonna have to come up quite a bit.
going back together always seems a lot easier than uh, always seems a lot easier than putting it to, uh, than taking it apart. <coughs> but you've got everything gold up, greased up, all the rust knocked over, knocked off of everything when you put it back together. So I think what we're going to do next is put the hydraulic oil in it. We're going to uh, take it out there and drive it around, play with it some, and uh, get all this stuff cleaned up around it and take it out there and drive it some and make sure it's right before we put that dual hub and uh, dual back on it. That way, uh, if there is some kind of issue in there, we don't have to take the dual and the dual hub off. It's going to add like an extra step in there. We'll have to jack it back up and all that, but I'd rather do that. And that way, uh, you know, if something is wrong in there, which I don't think it is, uh, we that'll be that one less step we got to do. see any leaks and everything looks good everything sounded good the brakes stopped the tractor and wasn't no chatter noise in the brakes stopped nice and smooth may have still have just a little bit of air in the brake system but I think that'll work its way out well, we got to jack it back up and put the dual hub on it and put the dual on it and we'll call this project complete. Okay, so this should give you a little idea how these hubs work. You got these hubs and it's a perfect circle in the back. And then you got these two wedges. One catches in the front, one catches on the bottom. And what keeps it from turning on the axle is there's a big keyway built into them wedges there and as you as you uh, pull your bolts tight it clamps that axle tighter and tighter and tighter what Robert's running out is what's called the jack bolts they go through here you see these two lugs right here? That's a bolt and it goes through and it pushes on these lugs and that's what helps to push them out to get them off. 
you tighten on them a little bit and then you beat on the end of this axle and get the vibration going and it pushes them out. The best thing to do is if you don't have to have your tractor immediately, which me and Robert didn't and we was lucky, every time we walked by that thing we would uh Every time we'd walk by this tractor, we would spray all them wedges and stuff down with penetrating oil. And we done that for about two weeks. And it makes a big difference. Another, <clears throat> another little bit of aggravating part of doing this is getting your wheel width set. Because sometimes you'll get it where you are and when you tighten them wedges it kind of pulls them hubs one direction or another. This one right here we originally set it and when I tightened the hubs it had pulled the hub in an inch so I had to loosen them back up and walk it out about an inch and tighten it back up but it's right where it belongs now. So now we just got to get the dual hub set where it needs to go. And I think what Robert did was come out here on the end of this axle and he measured the distance from the end of the axle to the hub is how he done that. So that's how we're going to set that other one and hopefully it'll be right on the Monday. I think he's got it set now for the fun part, pulling them bolts tight. But you can run them up with the impact. All right, we're gonna have to yeah, knock, it knock it back out. But, uh, so yeah, that's what I was talking about on that, pulling that stuff in. Um, we, I took this tractor out there and run it a little bit, and when I come back, I've got two or three extra turns on them boats. When you do this, it's a, it's a good idea to run it about a day and then come back and check your boats and make sure they're tight. Well, Robert's uh, topping off the hydraulic oil after we ran it some. Got the deal back on. We should be fully operational now. Tractor's a little bit newer than it was. It's, that axle right there was off of 4755. 4755 is what took the 4650's place. Someday, I'd like to own, I'd like to have a 4620, a 4630, which we already got the 40 and the 50. And then I'd like to have a 4755 and a 4760 and have that whole size of them Soundguard tractors. Have the complete collection. Uh, I think that would be pretty cool. But alrighty guys, I'm going to sign off. Y'all seen us put an axle in a 4650. Hopefully you learned something you can use down the road.